Well, here I am outside the SMP conference with, what's your name, sir? Stuart Hosey, MP for Dundee's. Fantastic, Mr Hosey. And uh, we're just going to talk a bit about just now about the policy and what the, your, the policy is just now. Nicholas was talking about it last night uh, and independence in Europe and also uh, the single currency as well. Mm -hmm. So basically the single currency um, is now fermenting as an idea which seems a lot more sensible and a lot more thoughtful than like the last um, referendum. It seems to be a correct, for me personally, looking from the outside, it seems to be a correct policy. What's your thoughts on the independent uh, currency? Well, in 2014, a position for a formal currency union was very credible, very well thought through and in the best interest of both countries, uh -huh. Scotland and the rest of the UK. Yeah. The problem, as you know, mm -hmm. is that the rest of the UK said no. Uh -huh. So whatever we do in the future, it has to be in our hands. Uh -huh. In that sense, it's got to be politically bombed. Uh -huh. If that means moving towards our own currency, properly, credibly, in our hands, where no one else can say no, of course that's a sensible thing to do. Uh -huh. And uh, the, one of the things that obviously the, um, Nicola brought up last night was the fact that uh, the, there is a situation, if, we're, if the policy is to remain in the EU, that the, there is a, request, a requirement for abdo uh, adoption of the, the euro. Well, that isn't true, of course. I mean, uh -huh. Some have are, proved it, haven't they? There, 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 there are many countries mm -hmm. in the European Union uh -huh. who are not in the euro. Uh -huh. That's the first thing. Yeah. Secondly, in order to join the euro, Mm -hmm. uh, you have to meet certain criteria and you have to be in the exchange rate mechanism. Yeah. Joining the ERM is voluntary uh -huh. and no one is volunteering Scotland to do it. Uh -huh. So I think we can put that particular yeah. union of scare stories about. Well, can I, can I tell you a wee bit about me? But, uh, obviously, we just met. Uh, I'm a, I, I got a, a degree in financial services. I was a qualified stockbroker and financial advisor until 2011. I'm no longer authorised to give any advice. It wasn't because but the, the government uh, in Westminster decided I was no longer competent to give advice and I had to do other exams. I he went to Dubai, I headed up two Forex companies. Now, if you've got a currency, you're going to need FX or uh, derivatives brokers in Scotland. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, there is no derivatives brokers in Scotland just now, which is something I would like to eventually well, set up. You, you're going to need the whole range uh -huh. uh, that's right. of capacity yeah. that's regulatory and functional that's with great. things like that. Yeah. That's why the proposal from the Growth Commission is to move to our own currency over a period of time, allowing sufficient time for that entire infrastructure to be established. That's exactly the correct So you're going to be looking for expertise like myself and for people who have had experience well, of a, doing forex that, brokerages. That's uh, a hell of a job interview. I think, that, <laughs> I think the thing is we've been looking for all uh, the expertise yeah. in all of the institutions, private and public, uh, required to make sure a currency function could facilitate, Yeah, it could be facilitated. And uh, so can you tell us, uh, just now you're obviously looking to double potentially the MEPs. It's looking very good in the polls just now. I believe there's one seat that's 50-50 with the Conservatives and uh, the Brexit party from what I could see was looking at the other seat and Labour's got the other seat as well from the polling so far is that what your thoughts are just now? Well you've seen the polling yourself mm -hmm. it's very difficult because of this PR system and there are only six seats across yes. Scotland it's very difficult to win three or more uh -huh. but all I can say is the SNP will be working incredibly hard to win two or three or more to win as many as we can but the electoral system mitigates, yeah. you know, a clean sweep. There's smaller countries that have got larger amounts of MEPs, isn't there, uh, um, uh, per, uh, per capita or people of population? Well, this has been an ongoing problem. The number of MEPs Scotland had has shrunk over the, over the years. Mm -hmm. We've gone from single constituencies to Scotland as a single multi-member constituency. Now, obviously, with independence, if we're in the European Union, and I hope we are, we look again at the representation we have in the European Parliament. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. because I mean it's less than half of the smaller, some smaller exactly. companies exactly. as well. And uh, so, what is the what is the pl uh, platform that the SNP are going to stand for? The EU? Are, are, are they talking about a second referendum or revoking Article Fifty? Uh, well, again? the policy platform specifically will be announced in the next short period of time in the uh -huh. run up to the uh, election date. Uh -huh. But I think the key thing we can say is. We'll be campaigning to stay in the European Union. Uh -huh. We'll be campaigning against Brexit uh -huh. because Brexit's a fundamentally daft idea. 
I will let the people choose. And uh, obviously there's a million Scots that voted for Brexit and there's some people and members of the SNP who want a proper independent Scotland out with the EU as well. There's, there's a obviously quite a, a proportion within the SNP who want that sort of uh, Scotland outside the EU as well as I think a majority who want well, to be staying in the EU. It's true there's a range of opinion mm -hmm. in all political parties, of course. both for and against the European Union. Mm -hmm. The job of the SNP is to make a strong case mm -hmm. as to why the EU is a good thing, mm -hmm. why Brexit is a profoundly bad thing, mm -hmm. to make that case and to win it. You can't take anyone for granted. Mm -hmm. But I think when we see the shambles which is Brexit, mm -hmm. I think it's a very, very good case for an independent Scotland remaining in the EU to be made and I'm sure we'll be making it. Two, two, two final questions. But lastly, uh, what second last one? Uh, the just now, what's the chances of uh, Westminster refusing a second referendum uh, for Scotland for the SNP? Because uh, Nicola was talking about putting forward a, a, a second uh, referendum, and the Conservatives look like they're going to try and knock it back. What's your thoughts on that? Do you well, think they're going to do that? The argument for Westminster is now is not the time. Uh, but as far as Westminster is concerned, that will never be the time. Now is never the time uh, in Scotland. That's unsustainable. Uh, the better we do in elections, the better the SNP do in the polls, the more seductive a second referendum becomes, uh -huh. and it, to the point it becomes impossible for the UK simply to say no. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, so that I mean, very interesting uh, predicament that's actually happened just now. And what's your thoughts about Brexit? Finally, um, obviously with so many remainers. I mean, there's a million Scots who I don't see represented from the MPs or the or even the MSPs. The million Scots who voted for Brexit just now. They're not represented just now in that either chambers proportionally to the 38% they voted for. You know, when you, when you talk about these numbers, the people who voted for Brexit in Scotland, you've got to ask the question, what was it they voted for? Some of them were told, oh, you don't have to leave the single market. Mm. Some were told, you don't have to leave the customs union. Mm. Some were told, oh, there'll still be freedom of movement. Mm. I bet you'd be struggling to find more than half a dozen people who actually voted for what the UK government is now proposing. Mm. So when we say there are people who voted for Brexit, well, there may have been. And they may have voted for many number of things. Mm. None of them voted for Theresa May's deal. Yeah, well, that was what I was going to ask you. There's not exactly... For Theresa May to never actually put through her deal anyway, it's now at gridlock, nothing's going to actually happen until uh, there's probably another general election. So uh, uh, politically, just from the numbers alone, from the amount of Remainers, uh, there's nothing going to be actually be able to be put through in the intervening period until there's another general election. Well, that may be true, or a change in leader, or a massive change in the deal she proposes to the House of Commons. One of these things has to happen. But even if even Boris Johnson, sorry for interrupting, even if Boris Johnson got right. in, for instance, there was a change of leadership, yeah. Uh, he would still, the Tory party split between the Christian Democrats and the One Nation Tories and the ERG. So that, and there's more uh, um, to, uh, One Nation Tories and Christian Democrats than there are ERG. So even if Boris Johnson, because he's popular, if he got to the last two of the Conservative Party and he went to the membership and they voted him in, it doesn't mean he's going to have numbers to do anything even if he did get in. Well, that's absolutely correct. The whole thing is a shambles. And I'll leave you by saying yeah. what this actually demonstrates is that if you go into a referendum, the Brexit referendum, like the Tories did, without a plan, you end up failing. And that's why the lesson for us is when we go into the next independence referendum, the plan we have has to be robust, detailed, and politically bombproof. Listen, thank you very much. That's an absolute pleasure. You've been great. Thank you very no much. No problem. Thank Take you. Care.